why do we hate Arabs? Or more precisely, when did Europe hate the Arabs? My passion has been studying Islam in the West. I wanted to look at English-speaking countries. But naturally, my research has gone further than that. It's gone beyond England. It's gone beyond America. It's gone to all of Europe, to be frank with you. So I've come to Italy, because I wanted to see if I could find the same patterns. Welcome to Southern Italy. This reminds me of a couple of years ago when I did my dissertation. It actually focused on the mirage of the Prophet Muhammad. Now you're probably thinking, why am I talking about that? coming to Italy. I'll tell you why. Perhaps the stories are linked even more than you would think. So today I wanted to talk about the relationship the European world has had with the Arab world. Being in Italy, what I've read about is some of the cross-cultural exchanges, most notably within Sicily. But I've seen maybe perhaps bits and hints of that within Italy too. Walking through the streets of Italy, seeing the architecture, some of that is still very much alive. Now in the mundane age, Islam hasn't penetrated Italy in the same way that it's done in the rest of the European world, America too. But the older exchanges that occurred between the Arabs, Italy and Spain, most notably Spain, is what's really interesting to me. My studies back then focused when the Prophet Muhammad saw the heavens in a phenomenon known as the mirage. Now the nature of that has varied through scholars and interpretations over different years. That's not actually where my focus was. He has exchanges with the angels. A really amazing tale, whichever way one believes it. I think what I really took away was the motivations behind the stories that were told. Within it, the Prophet Muhammad sees heaven, he sees hell. I was looking into the motivations behind it. One thing I took away is that it spawned an entire genre of work known as Mirage Namas. My focus was on why did it happen? How does that link to Italy, you ask? Well, actually, quite strongly so. There's a school of thought that Dante perhaps very heavily borrowed it. And that's not me saying that now. That's Miguel Asin, a Spanish scholar, a monk, saying that. He wrote an entire treatise about how Dante perhaps lifted that entire narrative of the Prophet Muhammad and put it into his own works. Perhaps it even influenced Botticelli in the way that he looked at hell in some of his artwork. It's almost going as far as to say one of Dante's greatest works was plagiarised from this account. So what does that mean? I think Europe owes a lot more to the Arabs, but this thing goes back a lot further than that. So this comes to when did Europe pay the Arabs because it's taken so much from them. And that's what's interesting to me. There was a time when even though Europe adopted Arab values, there was a movement to entirely cleanse scientific fields of any Arab influence. And that movement filtered across all sciences. However, we're just going to talk about medicine today. In a wave of anti-Arabism, Renaissance thinkers sought to cleanse Arab influence. In some ways, the issue was the charge of blasphemy, heresy, that Muslims believed in Allah and the Prophet Muhammad. Many of these early Renaissance thinkers used different terms to describe the impact of the Arabians on their culture. Some people said Arab lies, some people called it heresy, some people went further and they were infuriated that any kind of Arabian influence on their culture could be tolerated, medicine in particular too. The charges were quite obvious, this heretical nature coming of Islam and then teaching them medicine, science and that impacting their own culture and understanding of the world. By 1530, the role of Arabs was a contentious issue within science. Now, this only lasted for a short time. It certainly wasn't an enduring influence, but it was certainly there. Now, what I've talked about today is only really a summary of a specific era of time where Arabs were not liked. However, that wave of anti-Arabism perhaps has still stuck around. What's very ironic to me is that Europe took so much from the Arabs, yet at the same time sought to dispel them as well. And now we don't really see those Arab influences left with Italian culture in the same way as they once were. Now, my time in Italy has made me reevaluate Islamic contributions to Europe. That's something we've forgotten as a continent, even as a civilization. And being in Italy, I've seen the Arabian influence myself. Reading about it has inspired me. There was definitely aggression towards the Arab scientists. However, this extreme anti-Arabism didn't last. It did not pervade all levels of the scholarly world. And that's what I'm setting out to find.